preview the next live trial that we are covering here at Court TV, the romance novelist murder trial. This one's a doozy. Defendant Nancy Brophy is accused of plotting and killing her husband's death of 26 years, Chef Dan Brophy. Prosecutors honed in on the romance writer after uncovering several suspicious web searches and an essay that she wrote titled, How to Murder Your Husband. Court TV's Matt Johnson has a look at the story. The Wrong Lover, The Wrong Husband, and Hell on the Heart. These are the romance novels penned by Nancy Brophy. But did they become a script for murder? Nancy Brophy is accused of killing her husband, Dan. We're given four dozen oysters to each team. In this tribute video put together by the now-closed Oregon Culinary Institute, Dan, a chef instructor at the school, is seen helping his students. On June 2nd, 2018, students found his body covered in blood. He had been shot in the back and chest. They rendered aid, but were not successful. Nancy took to Facebook to mourn her husband's death. She wrote, I have sad news to relate. My husband and best friend, Chef Dan Brophy, was killed. I'm struggling to make sense of everything right now. Nancy's neighbor, Susan List, reflects on her memory of the Brophys. They kept to themselves, most of the neighborhood does, but from what we could see, it was just a normal neighbor. The couple lived in this home, less than seven miles from downtown Portland. Susan says Nancy had a special place reserved in the house just for writing. I didn't know she wrote so many books. They had an open house one time that we went and looked through the house and it looked very nice. And she said, this is where I write my books. And so it looked like a really nice little nook. According to police, they had fallen behind in their mortgage. But Dan's life insurance payments were paid and Nancy stood to inherit more than a million dollars from his insurance and workers' compensation policies. Police canvassed the area around the culinary school where Dan worked. Surveillance video revealed a minivan similar to the one Nancy drove in the same neighborhood the same morning that Dan was killed. According to court documents, when asked by investigators, Nancy Brophy stated that she was at home all morning. A search of Nancy's computer revealed more suspicious activity. Police found evidence of gun part purchases from websites eBay and GhostGuns.com. Detectives also discovered an eyebrow-raising article that she had written titled, How to Murder Your Husband. She starts the article by writing, As a romance suspense writer, I spend a lot of time thinking about murder and consequently about police procedure. Her defense will likely argue that the article is tongue-in-cheek and not meant to be taken seriously. But the state prosecutor isn't joking. She's been charged with murder in the second degree. Nancy Brophy maintains her innocence and has pled not guilty. Oh, it's, uh, we're expecting a jury selection. Uh, actually, the opening statements, I believe, starting Monday of next week. So we're gonna, our, our team is already out there in Portland, and we are going to uh, be getting that trial uh, as well, adding it to our menu. Of course, it's a West Coast trial, so uh, it'll be afternoon. C.K. Hoffler's still with us. And C.K., it's, uh, it's a great story, right? You know, the, the novelist uh, accused of murdering her husband, but... Uh, there's more, you need more than that, right? A, a good story to a jury to get a conviction. It's gonna be an interesting case. Um, is it not, you've got her web searches and, and, that, and that article that she wrote about getting away with murder, but they never found the murder weapon. You know, they, there are some holes in the case. Well, you know, Ted, this is going to be a great, juicy, salacious case that will probably um, get the attention of jurors. I imagine the people would want to serve on this jury. But there's a lot of circumstantial evidence surrounding this case. Uh, and, and, and what's may, may be very, very interesting about this case is that this involves a couple of a certain age, a certain stage in life. You know, typically you see these potential crimes of passion, if you will, from younger people. And that's not to say that older people don't engage in crimes of passion as well. But if she is indeed guilty, it's going to be very, very interesting. And the, and the prosecution has got to present a compelling case of circumstantial evidence because they've got to connect the dots. They've got to tell a story. Because of the salacious nature of the crime, if you will, the story can be laid out very nicely, but I just don't know what kind of evidence they have. And it's other than this story where she 
basically lays out how to kill your husband. Now that of course is a very, very, very bad thing to do if you have plans on killing your husband. <laughs> but because she probably, I would imagine, the state is going to tie every single thing that she says in that article to every single thing that happened to her husband. So it will be interesting to see how they tie together. I think this is a case worthy of popcorn, Ted. We should have popcorn and we should watch this trial. Yeah, which we will together here uh, at Court TV. The, the one thing that also stands out is that motive. The, uh, yeah, they had some yeah. financial difficulties. They, had, they didn't pay some of their bills, but she always managed to pay the life insurance. And uh, there was, uh, you know, over a million dollars of life insurance added with financial difficulties. That's always a compelling potential motive that makes sense to jurors. It does. Indeed, it does, Ted. And I think that makes more sense, I believe, to jurors than infidelity, because infidelity, and I don't know if there's infidelity in this case, but if there is infidelity in this case, that would be another motive. But the financial hardship, but even with financial hardship, paying up an insurance policy, a million dollar policy, and then other policies that could potentially, where she is the sole beneficiary, is going to make that circumstantial evidence and the connecting of the dots for the prosecution much easier. Because now all of a sudden you have a reason, a motive, and it's going to be really difficult for her to, if she takes a stand, or for any witnesses to refute the notion that she cherry picked which bills to pay, but certainly made sure she stayed current on the insurance policy where she standed to benefit. So that makes this really, really, like I said, salacious, juicy, and popcorn worthy. Yeah. Well, again, uh, we're expecting opening statements on Monday. She has. Uh, claimed her innocence from the very beginning of this, um, but she is now facing murder charges, a murder charge, and we'll watch it all. We'll watch it together.